So, so, and, right? It's Monique for Nude. Welcome back for another video. So today I have a special guest on my channel, Miss Lauren. Yep, this is Lauren. I will link her channel down below in the description box if you guys want to check her out. And today we'll be doing a new series, the Purpose series, with this book that we have, The Purpose Driven Life by yeah. Rick. Warren. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started. We are going to discuss. Uh, four um, of the days out of the book, one through four, and we're going to start with day one. Mm -hmm. So let's read what day one is about. So day one is about, it all starts with God. So, right. So one of the key highlights that stood out to me was discovering your purpose starts with asking God first. And I think that is so true. And that's kind of how I found myself in this journey was because, you know, I felt like I, there was, there has to be more to life than just this, you know? So in discovering my purpose, I asked God and that's what kind of led to this whole journey altogether. Yeah. I, one thing that I got out of the book um, that it stated was saying that it's not about you um, and that your purpose in life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment. And something like that is a very strong point because you have to realize that there's so much more um, than in this in this life um, and to your purpose that's being fulfilled that has nothing to do with what you want specifically. It's what God wants for you. Exactly. As well, like just definitely seeking um, your purpose through him. And right. not on your own terms and on your own means. Um, that was definitely a good one as well. Um, yeah, it definitely states to here. Like it says, you know, we ask self-centered questions. Mm -hmm. That's really good to know too. We do like, you know, what do I want to be? Um, what should I do with my life? And what are my goals and my ambitions and my dreams um, for the future? And I know, you know, I catch myself doing that a lot of times too. Like always trying to figure it out and not instead of just going to God about you know what it is that he needs me to do exactly so yeah that's that's definitely a good point as well mm -hmm. um another good point i thought from this this day um is um it says you know you were made by god and for god and until you understand that life will never make sense and mm -hmm. i think that's a very strong point as well so something at the i guess the day one it tells you to think about um my purpose and a point to ponder was it's not about me, which we've, we've mm. basically discussed and said. Um, and also the verse out of this day one is to, um, or to remember, is everything Everything got to start in him and find his purpose in him. And that's from uh, uh, Colossians, right? I'm this, Colossians. Colossians, okay. I know, right? I always mess up with <laughs> Colossians. <laughs> Bible names. Right. <laughs> um, yes, but one um and 16 and this is i guess a message from i don't know what book they're using that they I mean, msg reference. version yeah msg exactly. version yeah and that was one of the questions at the end of the book um in spite of all the advertising around me how can i remind myself that life is really about living for god and not for myself and i think that's what god really wants us to understand is that he wants us to pour outwardly towards other people and not be so self-centered or concerned about ourselves so yeah it all starts and begins with god so i like that i like mm -hmm. that point yeah. and that's a good question because i know with me like us having social media now oh my goodness and yes. you and you see so many people like living their best life living their best life but like what it says the advertising like people mm -hmm. quote in different like you know um quotes and stuff from certain things and you're thinking like okay but it's like is that quote really for you? Is that quote really, you know, like don't get yourself so caught, caught up, up in what people think are doing are, right and what they're aver what they're advertising to you, even those quotes and stuff, but to remind yourself that you're living for God and what he has for you is the conversation and right. that you need to have with him and not the things that you see advertised to you exactly. and even quotes. Um, and so I think what 
we, what we could do or what I wrote that you know we could do is by talking to God and basically reading his word right you need to get your fill directly from God and not everyone else because that that will get you lost and never find your purpose if you're constantly seeking your purpose through other people and not directly through the source which is God right so don't outsource yourself find your source t through God and in, in, in his word exactly so, yeah so now we are going to move on to day, day two. two. What is day two, um, Mo? Day two says you are not an accident. Despite what your parents may tell you, <laughs> you're not an accident. Despite, despite any situations as far as your parents are concerned, <laughs> you are not an accident. And um, some points that I like um, that they, you know, especially in the beginning of this day is that it says your birth was no mistake or mishap. And your life is not a fluke, uh, not a fluke, uh, not a, mm, your life is no <laughs> fluke of nature. <laughs> okay. Um, and your parents may not have planned you. And I know a lot of us, you know, <laughs> um, I don't but God did. I did so. right, right. Exactly. And that's the thing it says, but God did. And in fact, he expected it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of like what yeah like even though our plan our our parents were doing what they was doing mm -hmm. and they were not <laughs> thinking god was thinking and it was expecting you mm -hmm. and that's and that is that's that's good to know that makes me feel warm because yeah like oh he thinks about me he loves me that much and you know he actually planned me even though my parents didn't so <laughs> Like, even though, you know, they weren't thinking of the consequences of the actions, it didn't matter because God was, was plan was, he already had, you he know, planned you for his purpose. Right. And, um, and another point that he made, it says that the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. And so even though, you know, might not be planned as far as earth is concerned, his purpose was, is already planned for mm -hmm. you and was already made in his image so that's that's something that's good and saying that it's not fate nor chance nor luck nor consequence um uh girl i'm messing up the word where is it nor uh, coincidence coincidence <laughs> i'm sorry that you are breathing at this very moment so even us having this conversation mm -hmm. like god had it specifically made. and you know what's so funny i'm gonna insert something <laughs> yeah, that is off track but usually every week i feel like god will give me some inspiration to make a video and this week I had nothing. I'm like, okay, God, what's going on? What am I gonna talk about? And then boom, this happened. I was like, what? <laughs> yes, this obviously somehow right. was planned. Yes, that's so God, funny. Yes, like that's good. No, that's really good. That is really good. So, and the key um, points that I got was that poem in day two yes. that said, "I'm gonna read a little bit." No okay. trauma that you faced was easy, and God wept that it hurt you so but it was allowed to shape your heart so that into his likeness you'd grow and that poem was from russell clifford his it's russell clifford's poem um and that that's that poem is really good so yeah. if you guys get a chance to look that poem up look it up online and it's really it's really, really heart really touching nice. like it is mm -hmm. and it just makes me um think about you know reflect upon all the stuff that i've been through in my past um and then it, if you guys don't know i made a video uh I don't know, a few weeks ago about why does God allow tragedies and sufferings if you guys want to check it out um and it just it just lets you know like okay even though bad things happen to you that's God uses that for a purpose as well um unfortunately we live in a sin world so it's, bad stuff is going to happen right. but he will use that for his good purposes yes and um another good point um I from that like you were saying like even with like the bad stuff is like knowing that you know it says here in the in one of the in the readings and so definitely you guys you know reading this book will be very helpful um if you're definitely seeking that purpose but it's saying like i have carried you since you were born and i have taken care of you from your birth so even when you are old i will be the same even when your hair has turned gray I will take care of you. I made you and will take care of you. So just knowing that he's there at all times. Um, it's, it's it's really because we go through a lot, like you mm -hmm. said, with like bad things going on around us. Like, but just knowing that he is there 
in the midst of all of it um and that he's he, he's never left and so from the time you were in the womb when your parents weren't thinking but to the time you die he will be there he will be there so um and that and that's really good and i like that poem too as well mm -hmm. so at the end of day two a point to ponder was <clears throat> i am not an accident so knowing that you are not a mistake even if your parents or you got some rough parents out here. I know. And they, like to, them. And they like to state their little opinions or make their little... Or make you, you feel less than than what God said no, you are. God said you are not an accident and you are not a mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and a verse to remember is that I am your creator. You are in my care even before you were born. And so that's an Isaiah 44, um, 2. And that's the CEV version. Um, so, a uh, question to consider? So, the question to consider for day two is, I know that God uniquely created me. What are areas of my personality, background, and physical appearance that I am struggling to accept? Yes. So, that's a good question because we know that a lot of our, you know, um, personality and background comes from like our environment. Um, our families, um, even habits, mm -hmm. things that, um, you know, we see on a daily basis, Right. And we're struggling to accept saying like, we know this is a part of us, but we know we can change too through God. So, um, for me personally, um, I'm struggling to accept, um, I'm not going to do that I didn't have anything here. I'll, I'll do my, okay. <laughs> So what, okay, so what I, I guess, I don't know if I still struggle with this kind of sort of a little bit, but I know I really struggled with this in the past was part of my personality was how shy and like reserved and just to myself I am a lot of the times. And I feel like that was the main reason why I would drink to get drunk was mm -hmm. so that I can be more out there more outgoing because you know when you drink you're just all over the place and when I was drunk I was all over the place and I felt like okay I could be more sociable this way and then it's like no girl you you, you. <laughs> you know it's funny as you said because now it made me think of how we were talking about like the aggressive talk like mm -hmm. even though like I talk, like I'm clearly a loud talker like my voice just but <laughs> like sometimes people don't they don't take it. They don't take it the same way, right. like how. So I guess I could struggle knowing that, like, I can't talk to everybody the same, mm -hmm. like, or like, you know, or just thinking that how I think is maybe like maybe they're on the same page, right. and that was something I I struggled with as far as my personality was concerned. Thinking like sometimes people know, and then obviously they don't know because even I don't know. But then it also makes me think. I think those points of our personalities could sometimes also be our strengths. That's that's true. like you're obviously a, a really good communicator and <laughs> at least to a certain extent. I'm still learning. <laughs> and then for me, I'm, I'm more... still going through my own struggles, right. definitely. But yes, everybody yes, is. everybody is. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> and then for me, I can find myself not liking how quiet and shy and reserved I am, but that can also be a strength too. So even like you, what you think is a flaw might not be a flaw. Right, and that's the whole point of struggling to accept. So <laughs> right. accepting that if that's okay. Exactly. Right. Like some things are okay. You know, we're all being worked on, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's like a a bad, bad thing. thing. Right. Right. Because right. clearly God created you how he ne he needed you in right. order to, and that know. could actually fulfill your purpose. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads us to day, day three. three. <laughs> all right. And day three is what drives your life. Mm -hmm. What drives your life? Well, right now, currently, I was, <laughs> if people were to, you know, observe my life and they would say, God drives your life. Now, obviously, how radical you just changed from one day <laughs> being one person, next day you all for God is like, okay, what happened now? <laughs> so, currently, you got were, a revelation. Right. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> No, that's good, but no, that's but that's good. There's nothing wrong with that because we're all going through change, and so and this is a good one. This is a good change to know that you're seeking God. And right. I think a lot of us should be seeking God because we're trying to find the answers on our own, and you're not going to find the answers on your own. You're not. 
you know so um everyone's life is driven by something so <clears throat> exactly everybody's life is driven by something um some points that they gave us here was you know it says you know what is the driving force in your life and you know it says right now you may be you know be driven by problems pressure or deadline and i know just thinking i'm just specifically talking because i know social media is a big thing right now like um a lot of people are pressured to feel like they need to keep up with mm -hmm. what's going on what's being posted or people that they're following and the things that's going on that they think is going on in their life or maybe it's not going on in your life but knowing that you have to know that you know your journey is your journey and try not to be distracted by all the things exactly. going on um or even just the problems that might be going on in your life and knowing that those problems will not last always mm -hmm. um um, but they gave in, in, in day three, it gives um, specific points. It says many people are driven by guilt. So are you somebody who's driven by guilt? Are you driven by guilt? Is there anything that you feel like you're driven by guilt right now? Currently, no. But I can see maybe how in the past I might have been driven by guilt to like do certain things. But yes, definitely when you're younger, like right? I think you do feel like you're driven by guilt. Oh, so, kids especially. Yeah. Because you think about you're in your household and maybe like your parents have like expectations mm -hmm. and so you feel like you're you're guilty to like i have to meet to achieve overachieve and it's like that can go into your adult life as well yeah that can definitely boil over into your adult life for sure another point was many people are driven by resentment and anger you know are you driven by resentment and anger that's a good question you know comment down below <laughs> let us know talk to us we want to talk to you <laughs> Um, and that's that's something good as well to um, ask yourself, you know, are you driven by resentment and anger because maybe your parents, you know, or mm -hmm. somebody's hurt you or and you're not being forget, you know, you don't you're not, you know, obviously they say you both to forgive and forget. But some people are not forgiving out here. Like they're not trying to forget they harbor that stuff. And it's like they're like, God no. told you to forgive and he will not forgive you if you don't forgive people. So. So you got, you know, you know, ask yourself those things. And is it holding you back from being, mm -hmm. re being resent, you know, you know, being resentment or resenting this person or whatever. Um, and then another point was many people are driven by fear. I know that's one for me, like fear of like, I don't know, like sometimes you put your own expectations on yourself and you're driven by the fear of like not meeting your own expectations right. certain realities that haven't even happened yet and you're you're driven by this just this fear like that you're not gonna meet it and sometimes you have to like fall back and say look okay i have to calm down like I'm, right like i'm i'm giving i'm putting too much on myself mm -hmm. and that's not fair um but another point was many people are driven by materialism that's a big one I need to have the one we're just talking about i need to have this i need to have that more 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 and i was just explaining to lauren earlier Human nature is to want more. And God says, enough. Okay? <laughs> God says, enough is just enough. Okay. And we just want more, 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 more. We feel like we have to live and look a certain way. And have all these things when it's not necessary. I don't get wrong. I think nice things are nice. Nice things? No. You think God doesn't like right, nice things? Right, you're <laughs> <laughs> nice things are nice, but like sometimes we get so caught up yes, in like yes, yeah, more, 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 yeah. like greedy and hungry, and that's all you living for is like you're yes. living in your materialism, like that it, you putting so much value in it. Like if I break this, it's like oh my god, no, you didn't. Like it's it's material. Like this, it you can get another. It, it's like it's not that serious. Like and right, and another one's gonna be made, and another one's gonna be made, and it's gonna be one either. Better. It's always right. It's always going to be bigger and better. And I don't. I think that's what people don't get. That's how these companies be capitalizing off people. You know, one day they make this and make you want to buy. The next day gonna make a bigger and better thing, make you want to buy. It never ends. It literally never ends. And that's exactly what I was telling you when we, when I was on my way here about like some of these games, like. <laughs> There's gonna be another <laughs> game that's gonna be made and it's gonna be new and approved. You know what I mean? Like, yep. and you're not gonna miss out. Like, I'm never satisfied. You're not gonna miss out. It might be a point where, like, yeah, you're not playing that specific game with your friends at the time, but there's gonna be another game, and you just don't have to like put so much energy in this material thing. That's they're gonna new and approve it. Mm -hmm. So it's always gonna be new and approved. And then the last, I think this is the last point of that is that many people are driven 
by the need for approval. I'm big guilty. <laughs> I need the approval, whether I say it or not, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Or something. I don't know. Like that, I, that what I'm doing right now is good. Right, is right. It's right. Is good enough. Like it's it's. I'm right. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. I need your approval to say yes. So no. I can feel better. About so I can myself. feel better about what I'm doing. And that's or... actually a point I highlighted. <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he said one one key to failure is to try to please everybody. Are you a people pleaser? God actually showed me <laughs> I was a people pleaser. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. <laughs> It was just so funny. And it, it just taught me, like, the only person you need to seek approval from is God. Because if you try to seek approval from everybody else but God, you will always fall short because you cannot please everybody out here in these streets. Okay. <laughs> you can't. Nobody's going to be satisfied. <laughs> Nobody's going to be satisfied. At all. At all. So do not look to people to find your, like, approval or their, or their like, yes. Like, just know if... God called you to do something and you did it that's all that matters that's why I quit my job just like her <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I quit my job just like her but not because I needed her but it's because I the calling I feel like came through her for God to say that's a whole other story to tell but girl that was, was too funny we should we should do a story time we, on did, we do <laughs> We need to do a story time about how this all, how God created all this to occur. Like the timing, impeccable God. He's an on-time God. He's an on-time God. It's so funny. You're an on-time God. Okay. You're God over here. <laughs> right. But yeah, okay. So this is, so now we want to head to, let's head to our day. Um, oh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me back up. Let me back up. Now. I do want to discuss these points real quick because it also here in this day discuss the benefits of purpose driven living, like to actually live a purpose driven life, right? So one of them was knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. And so I know a lot of us, I remember going to an event and I felt like a lot of us women were trying to find out like, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Like, we know we have these jobs. And we know that the jobs are, of course, the pay bills mm -hmm. to, you know, because you still have to, you know, you live, live, <laughs> um, but you don't feel like that's your actual, right. That's how God given like. purpose, like, mm -hmm. like, like living in that purpose. You're just doing it because you need to survive right. here in life. And so knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. And so I think a lot of that, that's a good conversation to have because finding that is find that through God. And so one of the points that it says um, here actually I was saying, I, I have labored, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Job said, Job, sorry, Job said, my life drags by day after hopeless day. And I give up, I give up. I'm tired of living. Leave me alone. My life makes no sense. So in this is kind of, to me, saying that here he feels like his day-to-day -day is what we worthless right almost. what what we're <clears throat> sometimes we rely on because like what we're doing or what we're spending most of our time doing and i don't think and of course that's not what god sees god mm -hmm. is you know the greatest tragedy is is not death but life without purpose and so in that is basically saying like he kind of got caught up I think in the idea of like what is my purpose mm -hmm. and I don't want to be walking around here on earth and have no idea what I'm really supposed to be doing mm -hmm. um and that's you know and that's and that's deep to me I feel like that's deep because a lot of us are just like walking yeah, around yeah that's, that's a lot of us yeah exactly walking around having no sense of purpose but we're just doing because this is what <laughs> what we need to do. This is what the, I guess the world has us <laughs> right. to do, right? You know exactly. what I mean? Um, so that's good. And then also the other point was knowing your purpose simplifies your life. Exactly. So once you find out what it is. That's that God, it. That's all you need to do. Exactly. You don't, you don't have to be out here struggling to do dabbling this, dabbling that, dabbling this, dabbling. Child. And it's too much. Too much. Too much. 
I got to have been on less is best. Less is best. She's been on this less I've been is on best kick. Less is best. I don't. Less is more. Less is more. Exactly. Less is best. Less is more. So yes, purpose simplifying your life. Um, and they have some good points in that as well. But the next point also was knowing your purpose focuses your life. Mm -hmm. So now you're able to really focus in on what it is mm -hmm. that God has you to do. You're not all over the place. Because now it's been simplified mm -hmm. and now you're focused and you're able to really, you know, be useful, um, more useful, I guess, or cause you don't feel like you're just doing something to be doing. It. Right. And now you feel like I'm fulfilling, I'm being fulfilled. So that's, that's always great. And then the next one was knowing your purpose motivates your life. So now you have motivation. Right. Now you can get up out of bed and do what you want to do because it's something that you actually enjoy. So not only now you focused, but now you're actually motivated. Mm -hmm. And that's always a good thing, right? Right. Because sometimes working these Where jobs. Where does motivation come from? <laughs> that <laughs> paycheck. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I want my two weeks paycheck. That's it. And that's, that's all, all you can look forward to. And that's not life. That's not life. <laughs> that's not life. Life should not be... I mean, I mean, we know we need to pay our bills, but that just can't be your purpose. That's like, right. In yeah. life to go to that job because I need the paycheck so I can live. That's about it. And the end. <laughs> <laughs> so there, because there's no motivation in that. Like, and you don't want your motivation to be money. Like, right. Your exactly. Check. Like, that's crazy. Like, right. So, and then also the next point was knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. So knowing that life after death is even more grand more beautiful this all this is so small minuscule compared to what's beyond this i'm telling y'all this is just an assignment probably smaller than that <laughs> right <laughs> it's so much compared to what's beyond all this living space <laughs> <laughs> but no definitely and so that's also good to know so not only do you start with once you have your purpose or knowing the meaning and then simplifying it, then you come to your, you, you got focus and then you have motivation and now it prepares you for the life after here. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's, that to me, I can't imagine. Can you imagine? What? Life after the world here. I don't think it's within it's human capability, capability right? to imagine. Mind. That's true. That's true. What it would be like. That's true. So <laughs> here's a point to ponder. Living on purpose is the path to peace. Can you imagine that? I think that's what a lot of people long for is just peace. Peace of mind. A peace of just knowing that I'm, you're in the right space mm -hmm. and you don't feel the pressures of the world on your shoulders. And like we were talking about from the other days, the expectations mm -hmm. and everything. We're just so bombarded with so much information that sometimes it just needs to just wind it down and focus on God. And that's it. Have that relationship with him and just hear what he has set for you. Mm -hmm. And then you won't have to worry about everything else too much or that's going on around you. Right, all the chaotic things going on in this world. Too much. So, and the verse to remember is, you Lord give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you that's an isaiah 26 3 teb version all right so question and consider obviously again was what would now what would your family and friends say is the driving force in your life you can definitely answer that question down below in the comments um because i think we kind of discussed yeah, that we, right in the beginning. Um, but it also now asks what do i want it to be now what do you want the driving force in your life to be <clears throat> i definitely Wanted to be God as the central focus, obviously. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, living for other people, you're never gonna get. You're never gonna be satisfied. Right. First of all, you can never satisfy people, and they're never gonna bring you to the level that God can bring you to. So it's no point. Yeah, you can't satisfy people because people change every day. So one day it's one thing, and then the next day it's something else. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to be jumping, 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 jumping every day because I'm trying to satisfy somebody. No, the only person we need to satisfy is God, and he's constant. And he he's does consistent. not change. He does not change. God is love, and, and that's one thing we got to know. Mm -hmm. So, And the last chapter, chapter four, made to last forever. Hey, amen. Made to last forever. Fur. 
God has planted eternity in the human heart. Unless you got a red. I... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Heart. And then my red nails. <laughs> Even though our blood runs blue. We know that, right? For real. Yeah, when, when blood hits oxygen. Oh, then it turns red, yeah. right. So this is. That's interesting. I know, isn't that? <laughs> like, what? Actually, our, bus, our blood cells are actually blue. They turn red when it hits oxygen. Science, stay in school, kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are some points that um, you received out of this day? So the quote in this book that stood out to me was, death is not your termination, but your transition into eternity. It kind of gives you a different perspective on how to think about death. Most people think you die and that's it. That is not it, y'all. That Death is not the end, but it's the beginning to eternity, literally what he said. So if you knew that now, how would you live your life? that the decisions that you make now determine your eternity. And we all know what he's referring to, heaven or hell. So. Yep, yep. And it says your relationship to God on earth will determine your relationship with him in eternity. So have that relationship, right? I, you know, I think that it, get, it will give a lot of clarity. It mm -hmm. will give a lot of help and purpose to sit and just listen and try to hear what God has for you, you know? And I think that's that's really good because like you said, the, this life is basically preparation for the next life. Exactly. That's basically what it is. This life is just preparing you for the life with him, the eternity life. So I, I want to be there partying. Well. <laughs> right. Hey, y'all, I'm good. <laughs> like, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like it. Nah. But I can imagine that it could be, that's gonna be beautiful. Right? What do you think it'll look like? You're gonna have like an imagination of like how you. I imagine it? there's gonna be a Garden of Eden tree 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> but this time with the good fruits. Like her hat though. God is dope. Okay, so <laughs> God is dope. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is basically just knowing that um, your life after this life is just is so much bigger and so much broader. Um, and, I, and I like this point too. Something it says here is the only time most people think about eternity is at funerals. Like to know, like all of a sudden when somebody they, somebody dies, it's like, oh my gosh, you you like, you want to know that they've gone off to heaven or eternity, right? Um, mm -hmm. But that's not when we should start thinking about that. We should start thinking that we know that yeah. right now like, that we're preparing ourselves for that so that when that day comes, it's not something that all of a sudden becomes a part of our head. Like, oh, that person's going to mm -hmm. heaven and all that. It's like to know that I've lived the life purposeful life so that I'm on to the next, you know. And that's 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 really very interesting. And, mm -hmm. um, and of course, the you know, God does give us a glimpse of eternity through his word. So, you know, knowing, your, you know, and reading your Bible and knowing that he does give you a glimpse and an idea of what eternity will be like. Mm -hmm. So... That's something also to keep in keep in mind. Um, I like I like how in this in here he says like it's it, um, trying to describe eternity is like just trying to describe the internet to an ant. Exactly, <laughs> like we probably cannot contain it in our heads. We are so. not gonna be able to even fathom, right? Fathom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What it's like. What it's like. Um, and it says this world is not our home, so know that you know this is just. This is temporary. Everything you see on this God-given earth is temporary. Y and that's why we can't put so much in back to like what Day says, the materialism mm -hmm. and like all these the people and putting our, our, you know. Our hopes and our aspirations and our destiny. Of like, and, or approval yep. or, you know, just forget that, you know. Live the purpose life that God has for you and not what surrounds you because this is temporary. And so this is not home, but looking forward to our everlasting home in heaven. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. So I guess here, um, see. the point to ponder. The point to ponder for day four, <clears throat> which is our last day that we're going to discuss, but we're going to make this very, 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 purposeful right mm -hmm. <laughs> but the point to ponder is that there is more to life than just here and now and i think that is very strong um a point because you have to know that 
the day it, it everything that's going on it doesn't it will not last always so this is just the here and now and there's there's so much more um past this life and um also the verse to remember is this world is fading away and along with everything it craves um so but if you do the will of god you will live forever so and that's first john 2 17 the nlt version mm -hmm. and then the question to consider is since i was made to last forever what is one thing i should stop doing and one thing i should start doing today um what i basically said is stop this negative pattern of thinking because i feel like one of the major things that will hold me back is are my thoughts and my mind so considering that eternity that this is just a blink of an eye compared to eternity then i need to get my thoughts and my <laughs> pattern thinking patterns together and just you know do what it do and stop sweating the small stuff considering that it's it's really nothing compared to the grand scheme of things yeah the the the, the bigger picture that god has mm -hmm. um for sure um i feel you like you know, some things that I think I need to stop doing is worrying mm -hmm. and getting so concerned about what I have really no control over. Right. Um, um, and worrying, I think, I don't know if anybody else like me, like I sometimes catch myself worrying a lot and that's just something I have to try not to do um, and start, you know, relying that God had more trust, less worry more trust and less worry mm -hmm. that even though I can't see it physically, you know, sometimes we have to see it in order to like mm -hmm. believe, right? right? Um, and just knowing that your path is destined, God has it laid out and you have to trust him. And that's hard because like basically stepping out on faith mm -hmm. and, you know, really trying not to um, control everything. Right. I don't know if anybody out there is like a control, control freak. freak. Yep. Yes. But Must when, be controlling everything. God's like, no. Right, because he will bust your little bubble real quick <laughs> and then you'll be trying to gather all the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I think that's something. I don't know if anybody else, but you guys could also answer these questions down in the comments if you feel, you know, feel like you want to share as well. We are always willing to hear mm -hmm. what you have to say as well. Um, but that's it. That is our days one through four and we will be back right yep we'll be back on her channel we will be back on my channel miss lauren with day five through eight mm -hmm. um and of discussing the purpose driven life by rick warren <laughs> yeah i think this is a really good book and you definitely can you know tag along with us as well as we go through this book um so yeah, yeah. that's it y'all that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all. So don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give her a thumbs up. And subscribe to Miss Lauren's channel for more. Yep. All that will be linked down below in her description box. So you can stay tuned. We'll soon hopefully give you a days, I guess, how often we need to get this going. Mm -hmm. This is the first time. So just stick with us. Hang with us. And we will see you guys soon. next time. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now the question to consider. Would you like to read? Yeah. That's the one I read. Oh, you oh you read that question. Oh. Cut. Oh, oh. <laughs>